Hey folks, it's Fern Bark. One of the uh, things that I learned last summer when I was experimenting with my solar system is that my number one obstacle was refrigeration. In my travel trailer, the refrigerator is just incredibly inefficient. And it j would just completely suck my batteries dry overnight. Uh, so what I've done is I've purchased a a winter 65 quart portable freezer and what that's going to do for me is reduce my electrical load and uh, hopefully uh, make my when I move everything up to my property I just got make it uh, sustainable using solar power now unfortunately my budget did not allow me to buy the unit that I actually wanted what I really wanted to get was an ARB unit. Uh, they're Australian made. They're super awesome. They get tons of wave. The, the reviews on them are fantastic. Nobody dislikes them. Unfortunately, they are twice as expensive as the unit I got. And uh, right now I'm under a lot of budgetary type issues. So um, the winter got good reviews. I hope it's going to work good for me. Uh, I've been running it for a week, and it's working pretty good. I mean, a week is not anything to, to judge a refrigerator on, but I'm hoping it's going to work out for me. Um, and the cost savings is, is pretty significant. Uh, just for example, I think I paid uh, like $504 for the 65 quart, and if you get the ARB unit, that's about $1,200. Bucks. So it's a huge, well, I should, I'll double check that and to know but the difference is 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 pretty significant so I've been running this for two days a little over two days and it's costing 70 cents a day to operate sorry for the shakiness four dollars and ninety cents a week 21 bucks a month In two days, it's used uh, 281. Oh wait, no, it's it's using 281 watts right now. There we go. In two days, it's used 10.3 kilowatt hours. That's where the information I was going for. So here I am using the same style of meter, and in 10 day, 10 and a half days. I've used one kilowatt hour. I'm trying to find my button here. It's using one amp right now, though usually it uses about eight and a half to I'm sorry, point eight to point nine amps. It's running a little heavier right now. And it's uh seventy nine watts. And that fridge outside was uh two hundred and ninety watts. So that's the difference between those two units. It's huge. So here you can see it costs 0 .3, 0 0.027 cents a day, 18.9, we'll just say 19 cents a week, and 81 cents a month to run this cooler. Actually, running right now, and I wanted to get this on film just to kind of demonstrate how quiet it is. So it's pretty silent. I'm trying to do this. As you can see, it's uh, 35 degrees in there. I think I have it set for 33. So it's running, but it's it's really quiet. I got it hooked up to AC power right now. And uh, yeah, it's been running for a few days. This is the winter 65 quart uh, refrigerator freezer unit. It runs on a 110, 12 volt, and 24 volt, which is important to me because I'm going to be using this on my grid independent cabin I'm building and uh, that's going to be 24 volts. Uh, just to give you an idea how big it is, uh, 
hard to it's about 20 and a half inches uh, from the ground to the top and it's so hard to do with the camera about 17 inches a uh, deep and oh, got my hand right in the way 28 and a half or 28 inches across uh, it comes with uh, these latches right here that hold the lid closed and uh, the probably the weak point of this whole system are these handles right here it's kind of nice because they're spring loaded to flip back down but this unit itself weighs 60 pounds and when you pick it up you feel all of it I would not use these handles to pick this up if it was loaded with uh, drinks of any kind it, it feels pretty flimsy it's okay for picking up the empty unit but once you get this loaded it better be in the spot that you want it to be in and then coming around the outside down here is the control panel pretty straightforward um, you can I got it uh, you set the temperature and then uh, it tells you what temperature actually is inside that's so you can see right there you can hook up uh, I got it 110 and then the socket below is for DC voltage and zoom back to the back back sides pretty plain uh, got some good information on there but anyhow uh, the only thing you really need to do is keep these two vents clear and then if you wanted to you could insulate the rest of it and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up the lid and, and show you the inside okay the inside is uh, 23 inches across uh, 59 centimeters for you metric inclined folk and 13 and a half deep and it's get over to the edge sorry folks uh, it's about 16 inches tall I'm sorry yeah, 16 inches tall. Now it looks like there's about two inches of insulation all around the outside of this thing. It has it has one small basket right over the cooling element, and then a much deeper basket um, on the inside. And if you wanted to, you could use a small basket as a freezer space. And I think you could probably just put something right in between there to kind of seal it off a little bit, uh, so you don't freeze your stuff on the inside. I'm just going to use this exclusively as a refrigerator so that won't be a big complication for me. If I decide I need a freezer I might pick up another unit. And then what this is, this is the uh, you know your standard cigarette lighter plug adapter piece and I'm going to end up taking that off and I'll just hardwire it and if I, when I finally get to a spot that I'm going to keep it I'll probably shorten the cord because it'll just make it more efficient. But that's the the DC plug that comes with it, so I mean it's not a big deal. In fact, this is kind of a, a standard fitting right there, so it wouldn't be hard. Um, if you go to Radio Shack and ask them for a two-prong uh, audio video cable, I think that's what that is right there. So you could you could leave this intact and go get one of those and and, and cut it up at there about ten bucks. So it's not a, it's not a huge deal if you bung this up to, to fix okay, it. So I have these 6 volt Trojan batteries hooked up uh, to be 12 volts and right now they're indicating 12.74 volts and I'm gonna plug it into the DC socket right here and then I'm gonna measure the current draw. Oops, let me get that down there. So it looks like it's pulling uh, 4 amps at 12 volts. 4.1 that you can probably see which is uh, pretty low considering the fact that I have a 12 volt a little 12 volt car cooler and it pulls 5 amps and it's just a little dinky thing okay now I'm gonna hook this up into 24 volts and see what my amp draw is oh, kinda got going a little more we're doing almost uh, 6 volts here or I'm sorry 6 amps so it kinda took a little bit to get warmed up so 6 amps still not too bad 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check the voltage. I got it set up for 24 now. And I'm getting 25.35 volts. I'm going to go ahead and plug this fridge in and see what I'm getting for amperage. Starting up. So it's 1.9. Two. So it's a pretty hefty drop when I uh, hooked this up to a 24 volt system versus the 12 volt. So yeah, this is going to save me a lot of energy versus my other refrigerator in the RV that uses about. Uh, what was it? Like 17 amps. It was ridiculous. 2.2. Let's let it run a little bit more and see if it changes. Sorry about the shadow. Here we go. Yeah, it definitely likes higher voltage. And it's not that far off amperage-wise from when it was on 110. What was it? Like uh, right around 1. I'll have to go back and check my facts. <laughs> 